Today I'm going to be working on a MTD yard machine 20 inch push mower. It's got the Power Mower 140cc engine on it. Kind of a cheaper engine. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience with these. Briggs and Stratton is really my uh, expertise, if you will, if you want to call what I do expertise. But uh, on this lawnmower, <clears throat> this is uh, my neighbor's mower, and it's a very basic, generic mower. There's no adjustment on the wheels. The, the uh, side discharge doesn't spring up. There's no adjustment on the handles. So this is just the basic, basic lawnmower. Uh, his is not running, so I'm going to do a few things here just to see what's going on with it and see if we can get her fixed back up. I like most of these small engines, when you don't know what's going on with them, the very first thing that I do uh, after checking to make sure it's got gas in it, which it does, um, I, I just usually pull off the spark plug wire and then check for spark with this little spark plug checker that I got about 20 years ago. Uh, once you have identified that there is spark when you pull the rope, then you can really just concentrate on the fuel system and see if there's anything going on there. That's my advice to you guys before you start. Before you do anything, before you start buying spark plugs, before you tear apart the carburetor, before you throw this thing away, check for spark first. If it's got that and it's got compression, fixing the fuel system is fairly simple. Since this thing is tucked in here so far, it's going to be a lot easier if you take this top cover off, uh, which is going to be taking off these three bolts, which are probably 10 millimeter, and they are. So you got one, you got two, you got three. Whiz these off with a ratchet. You're going to take off your top rope starter pole, the gas tank, and the shield. <clears throat> then we'll have more room to get to the rest of this stuff. And once you get those three nuts off, you can gently take off your top pole. And don't let go of it because it's obviously spring-loaded. And just let that hang. And we're going to ease this up and out of the way. And remember, you've got a, you, it's your fuel tank here is connected on the side, and you got fuel lines and all this jazz. So, in fact, there you can see right dead center of the screen there. That's the bottom of the fuel tank. You can see the fuel hose there. I'm kind of wiggling it around. It goes into the carburetor. So if you've got a fairly full fuel tank, which this one isn't, be careful when you do this. Make sure the cap is tight. Uh, even if it is, you're probably going to leak some out because it's just going to tilt over to the side like this. Okay. And then once you have this out of the way, now you can focus on uh, removing the, the carburetor if you need to, and then, or if you're going to change out the spark plug. Because because if you haven't worked on these power more engines before, these especially these small 140cc ones. Look at this spark plug jacket here. This thing is like way down over the plug and it's a beast to get off. And you can't get your fingers around it or any, any tools if that top cover is on there. So just whiz off those three 10 millimeter nuts, take that top cover out of the way, then you've got access to all kinds of stuff here. If this never been off, it's going to be stuck on there. Okay, You're probably going to have to take a, a flat blade screwdriver and start prying your way around where this thing uh, covers the spark plug. You may have to take, <clears throat> if I didn't mention earlier, you may have to take some pliers, kind of twist this thing back and forth. Uh, just take it easy on there and eventually the thing will let loose. Once you get it off, um, as I've explained before in some of the other videos, you're just going to insert this spark plug checker in place of the spark plug. Make sure it snaps on there. Um, and for those of you that don't know, inside the end of this boot here, this wire comes out into basically like, I don't know, it's like a little clamp. It just pops right over the end of the spark plug. And that's why you have this divot here in the terminal end of the spark plug. So if you just, if you just push this in here and you don't feel that pop, or on the spark plug itself, if you don't feel that pop and you don't feel it get secure, the wire, the electrode and the wire, spark plug wire itself is not making good contact with the spark plug, it may not run at all, or it may be uh, hit and miss <clears throat> if it does run for you. So make sure that you've got a good connection in there. 
once you have, uh, well, for the sake of our spark checker here, then you take this clamp and you clamp it to any metal part of the engine. Okay, and this whole thing is looks like it's fairly well aluminum, so we're going to try it on an aluminum piece. When you pull the starter rope, you should see sparks jumping out from that center electrode to this outer ring around here. But now, as you see, this is going to be a trick to pull that starter rope since we took it off earlier in, in one of the earlier steps. So you're going to have to grab your, your top pole here and position it back over the flywheel and over these studs. And you're probably going to have to rotate this flywheel a little bit to get the center part of, of your pull to line up with the center part of this flywheel. Okay, it just is what it is. You're going to have to finagle it a little bit. Uh, I just got this on here by uh, moving it back up and down the rope enough to where that center moved around to where everything got positioned. And we're just going to run these three <clears throat> bolts down just a little bit to hold that on. So as you can see there, we had good spark. So now you know most of what is expensive and complicated on one of these mowers uh, is good to go. Now you can take your spark checker back out, hook up your spark plug, and proceed with looking at the fuel system. And as I said, when you are pushing the spark plug wires on, the boots, make sure you hear a good click. Let's see when we can hear it here. That's what you want to hear, something like that. may not always be so audible, but you should be able to feel it. And I almost forgot to mention one last thing on spark plugs. If you do need to replace this, you're going to need a, um, a 13 16 socket to get it off. This is a spark plug socket. Spark plug sockets have a, a rubber ring inside here that protects the end of that spark plug from getting broken when you're installing it. And that's really the main difference between that and a normal uh, deep well 1316 socket. Except for the obvious, which is this has on here, uh, so you slide it over your spark plug, right? Just like you would a deep well socket. But in some, some cases, you may not be able to get a ratchet on the end of this thing to release it. So you can take a crescent wrench and remove it like this if you're close on quarters. Usually more for cars than it is lawnmowers. Now on these engines with the circular air filters, don't let these slots in the cover fool you. Because <clears throat> for some of you, some of you guys like me, you may think, well, I may need to uh, poke a screw, flathead screwdriver in there and pry. Nope. Not on these power mowers. They just take a twist and off it comes. And then this is the filter. And it's basically just a styrofoam ring. If it's dirty, just kind of bang it out on the sidewalk or something like that. Get most of the crud off of it. Then to get to the carburetor, you're going to have two more 10 millimeter nuts that you're going to have to remove. Alright, once you have those two 10 millimeter nuts off, you can uh, gently pry this cover off. And once you've pulled this off, you're going to see that there's a, an air intake hose here that goes right up under this piece. That's where the connection is. Okay, you can see it there. So this, is, this hose is going to have to come off of this part here in order for you to get that cover off. All right, then you're going to have another rubber hose for the primer button, and that's just going to pull off too. So once you get those two items released, you can take that cover off and uh, clean it up. Then here, we're getting back down to more familiar territory. Uh, this is going to be our basic carburetor. And I can see it's got, a, it's got a fuel bowl on it there, so it's not the Pulse of Prime type carburetor like we have on some of the Briggs and Stratton engines. So it's going to have a fuel bowl with a float needle and seat, various passageways inside there that we need to check and make sure are clean and uh, various linkages here on the top that we need to remove and just make note of 
on how they're connected okay, on, on both sides before we start taking stuff off. So next step is going to be, actually, uh, we're going to remove this spring and then it looks like this is just going to this is just gonna come right off those mounting studs and we'll have access to the carburetor. So the next step is to you're gonna to want to take this fuel clamp off and my camera wasn't running before but all you do you just squeeze it together with a pair of pliers and you can move this thing forward or backwards uh, but you're gonna take it where it was here and just slide it back off the end of this inlet onto the carburetor then <clears throat> it's a matter of getting this hose off of the carburetor however you can. Uh, if it's an older mower, it's been outside a lot, you're going to have to probably wiggle uh, and maneuver this thing with a pair of pliers or a screwdriver. Just be careful to not break the inlet off of the carburetor when you're doing this. Okay, and I like to take it off of the carburetor side versus off of the tank. That way I can make sure the inlet is clean and not plugged up with anything.